Interesting stories. Interesting people. Welcome to the Humble Badger Podcast. Thank you for listening to this podcast today. Remember to like and follow us at The Humble Badger on Twitter and Facebook or at The Humble Badger Podcast on Instagram. This episode is brought to you with the help of our promotional partners at Living Arts Center. Living Arts Center is your arts and entertainment hub in the heart of Mississauga, so you can check them out at livingartscenter.ca. My name is Pablo Dawson. I am an event host and an MC and your host for this episode. And as we always do, we're going to start off with some random information or random question, maybe. Uh, this one comes to us online. And the uh, question is basically, do you carry your identification? Uh, this has often become an issue in various countries around the world. I haven't really experienced it necessarily in Canada, but I'm a paranoid person. I always carry some form of ID. It always kind of freaks me out when I'm traveling and they actually advise you not to take your passport around with you. And uh, that kind of does freak me out because if anything happens, no one's gonna know who I am and that kind of scares me. I'd like to know what my co-host thinks of that. It is quite frightening. I do tend to keep my identification on me at all times, just cause you never know when you get carded. That's you know, right. You have a Asian baby face syndrome, right? Again, once I shave this beard, it's uh, I get carded all the time. We should start by identifying yourself. Yes, we should do that. Hi, <laughs> I'm Hio Del Guapo. You can call me Chris. I am a singer. I am a cartoonist and part-time superhero. <laughs> that last one was a lie. I apologize. It's not really a lie. It's just very part-time now. It's more like yeah. contract work. It's, right, yeah. It's, it's a gig. It's, 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 it's a bit of a gig. Yeah, superhero market's kind of tough these days. Yeah, you know? superhero yeah. market is tough. You know, what with yeah. all the problems being solved and whatnot. I know, right? <sighs> he actually well, is wearing his underwear on the outside. Though. That's right. <laughs> Calvin, I see. Okay. <laughs> you know, they're super comfortable. They are super comfortable, yeah. sure. <laughs> and already chiming in is our guest for today. He has been a co-host on this podcast before, and I'll let him introduce himself. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your homeboy, The Identity Crisis. I'm a rapper, singer, producer, filmmaker, and all-around great baker. In case you didn't know. You keep promoting the baking. I You never bring any baked goods with ba you. Did I say baking before? Yes, you have. You have teased me with baking several times. And Sorry. yet I never see baked goods when you come into the studio. I actually meant bacon eater. That's oh, what I meant. I'm I see. So. I see. Baked goods eater. So I'm one of those two. I, I, I too would like bacon and baked goods, preferably together. Baked a, bacon. Yes. That's right. Let's all get go. baked. Let's all get baked. I think that's a good <laughs> idea. After the show, of course. Uh, what do you think about carrying your ID? Do you do it? I believe it's actually um, illegal to not have proper ID on you. I don't know if it's illegal. We can check that yeah, out. Yeah, I heard, I heard that recently, actually. Our crack research team will uh, will check that out. Speaking of our crack research team, um, <laughs> our co so... You were our co-host for the uh, first series, and uh, I put out a fact. It's my fault. I'm the one who screwed up. Uh, apparently, about a movie starring Jennifer Aniston and Jim Carrey, which uh, was Bruce Almighty. Right. But that was not relevant to what we were talking about, because the actual movie is with Jim Carrey and Taya Leone, and it's called Fun with Dick and Jane. Ah, so, oh, yes. yeah, this is from a previous episode. For those of you who are listening, you can see that the Humble Badger podcast always corrects its mistakes. So, <laughs> 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 But, Paul, please tell us a little bit about your music and your musical history and influences. All right. Yeah, I'm um, like I said, I'm a rapper, singer, producer. I started off as a producer mm -hmm. mainly. I was producing for other people. I was playing in bands as a guitarist and a keyboardist and that kind of thing. And then I was just like, you know what? I'm kind of done with being the band whore because <laughs> like at the end of the day, there's like, there. I mean, and there's a lot of people that do that still to this mm -hmm. day and I can't knock them, you know, because they're, mm -hmm. they're making money that way. Right. Mm -hmm. But uh, it just wasn't for me, mm -hmm. you know, and just, I, I wasn't building what I wanted to build, which was my solo career. Mm -hmm. So I, I looked at guys like, um, Pharrell and, and Kanye at the time when I kind of first started, they were stepping out from behind the board and becoming MCs, becoming rappers, becoming singers and becoming the forefront. And Kanye eventually ended up becoming one of the biggest pop stars there is. Right. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of, that was kind of what led me into, into going that direction, to be honest. But I had, I'd always dabbled in uh, a little bit of rock 
alternative rock, a little bit of um, dance music, EDM, house music, and hip hop. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I chose the name The Identity Crisis was because at the time that I was really first starting out, um, you'd go into HMV, you'd go into, go into music world, and they'd have all these different genres. And I didn't really identify mm -hmm. with any single one. I identified with kind of all of them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of why I chose that name was because people would, would be like, hey, what are you going to file under? And I'd be like, I want to kind of do all. Mm. And that's what I do. I yeah. mix it all. Yeah. So, so I rap over rock tracks. I rap over, you know, dance tracks. I put, I put like dance hall beats underneath rock tracks mm -hmm. and then I rap over it or I mm -hmm. sing over it. So that's kind of what I do. Yeah, no, that and that's, that's exactly, I think what, uh, so it's not, it's not necessarily that you, um, had any question about who you were as a person, but more that you didn't want to be pigeonholed into any one genre. Yeah. So it's okay. kind of, it's kind of, uh, yeah, that's exactly. Well, it works for you. Yeah. I mean, it, it definitely, uh, definitely works for you. I mean, like Thank the identity, you. that's just a cool sounding name. <laughs> the identity crisis. A little pretentious yeah. sometimes, yeah. but. <laughs> well, I don't think it's pretentious at all. <laughs> I mean, you believe it. <laughs> you're admitting that you're in crisis. Right. You know? That's right. So, yeah. right. so there's many meanings there. It's actually that's really right. impressive. Thank you. Right. So, um, I know you produce a lot of people, and mm -hmm. uh, and you recently. I know you did a show uh, with the Miss uh, uh, Music Awards. Music yeah. Awards. Yes, yes. Yeah. Shout out That's, to uh, the Rec Miss Center. Yeah. yeah. So do you have do you have any plans to do any more shows? Anything? Yeah, I'm waiting. I got some people putting in some offers. Um, I'm I'm just not gonna do any and every show that gets right, offered right, of and that's yeah. kind of how i've been over the last right. few years i actually took a six-year hiatus from playing shows right. um as a solo act i'm actually mm -hmm. part of a group called from far and wide as well ah, yes um, and we've <laughs> we've done shows um as uh, as a collective but as a solo act i've kind of, I'm, I'm pretty picky yeah. so that's what you should be right you want you want the moment to feel right that's yeah absolutely yeah. absolutely and it was great being on stage again after six years a six-year break was yeah. a long break and i thought i was gonna have issues i actually thought i performed better after a six-year break yeah. than i ever had so sometimes yeah. you need a break well, that's what it is too and yeah. there is nothing like being on stage like that live rush of like you know oh yeah yeah like absolutely I, I stopped singing for a long time and i really started about three four years ago again right and yeah it's just oh man nothing beats it you're a great vocalist by the way chris kindle oh, thank you very <laughs> much amazing, <laughs> amazing vocalist well, my government name and everything <laughs> that's right <laughs> my bad hey, no that, identity it crisis says that on here your ID. Yes, yes, it's it all did, out it for the world to see but uh if you go to the identitycrisis.com you can get more information about paul's uh, music as well as uh, the reason I'm pointing people to your website, perhaps prematurely, is because you have an amazing logo. Thank and you. Uh, you can also get this on a bunch of merchandise that looks very cool and feels comfortable, too. I have some. Uh, can you tell me how you uh, came up with the logo? What's the story behind the logo? And Yeah, so the the I actually had a designer design it for me. I kind of gave her a, a direction. And I... As an artist, I like to kind of let other artists do what they do best. Mm -hmm. And so I give them a general d direction. Just like when, when artists come to me and they want me to produce a track for them, they give me a general direction and I just try to kill it. Mm -hmm. And she killed it. I re her name is Tatiana Green. She's, uh, she's actually a huge filmmaker now. So mm -hmm. she, went from, she went from being um, just a, sort of like a regular designer web that mm -hmm. kind of thing. And then she she's worked her way to the top and she's killing it now. Wow, she's doing corporate crazy. all kinds of corporate like like video and stuff. So um but yeah, Tatiana Green, shout out to you. I haven't seen you in a long time. Let's go, go <laughs> grab a coffee. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. But yeah, the, I had the, the there's uh there's a two parts to my logo. There's two parts to my logo. There's mm -hmm. sort of the uh the statue mm -hmm. and there's my my font. Mm -hmm. Um the statue was my idea. Now, the reason why I chose that was because my very first album is called Record of the Year. Mm -hmm. And I kind of wanted to, it was tongue in cheek. It was, it was not <laughs> meant to be um, cocky by any stretch of the imagination. I wanted it to kind of, like the lyrics of the song are, I should win Record of the Year, mm -hmm. but I won't win Record of the Year. And it's kind of just like <laughs> tongue in cheek. And um, imagine his surprise when he won record of the year, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> at least within his complex, you know, right, that's, right. Uh, yeah, where there's voted. no other recording artists. Yeah, well, there was, there was that one other guy, but uh, I think you were, your album was much better than his. <laughs> yeah, definitely. That's just the way it is. No. So, so I was trying, I was trying to make that statue look like a trophy. Mm -hmm. And so that's, it kind of stuck after that first album dropped. It just became my, my logo. And I looked at guys like Kiss and the Rolling Stones and Wu-Tang Clan, mm -hmm. they they stick with a logo 
that they yeah. they keep from the beginning. Yeah. You know what I mean? And there's a lot of bands and artists that that don't stick with that and they make it work for themselves. I just wanted to follow that sort of mantra. Mm -hmm. That's branding, right? Number yeah, one, absolutely. That's your thing. It, it is. It's definitely a, it's a dope logo. Thank you. you. I mean, yeah. Thank you. So um, what does uh, you wear so many hats, rapper, producer, filmmaker, musician, um, part time stand up comedian? <laughs> <laughs> One day. Maybe. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Baseball, uh, yeah. What what do you do uh, to have fun? What are your hobbies and interests? What do you do to unwind your favorite flavor of ice cream? Oh, man. I am. Okay. I bowl. <laughs> you I bowl? bowl? Really? Yeah, like bowling? I love bowling. I like, love bowling. Not ironically, like actual. No, I love bowling. All right. He's not talking about cricket bowling. He's talking about like in a bowling alley, right? What's like, cricket bowling? Well, like bowling in the sport of cricket. Oh, that's extremely that's, that's, oh. difficult. You got to keep your arms straight and everything. It's oh, I, it's very difficult. Yeah, no, definitely not. It is. I didn't know it was called bowling. Yeah, yeah. it's called bowling, not pitching or right. throwing. Huh. interesting. Yeah. But anyways, that's yeah. that's uh, uh, off track. So you 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 um, you do bowling. What's your favorite bowling alley to go to in the city? Man, they shut both of them down. Oh, really? So I now have. There's only one. Or well, there's two that I go to. They're the only two in town. There's the one at uh, Winston Churchill. Whatever it's called, oh, classic uh, bowl, classic, classic oh, bowl, yes, and then yes. there's the one at uh, at Eglinton. Still in Streetsville? No. Oh, there's that one. That's only five pin though, right? I, I don't no know. Idea. I won a gift certificate once. I still haven't been. Yo, let's go. <laughs> let's go right after this. I'm pretty sure it might be expired by now. I got that like ten years ago. <laughs> no, it was a year ago. It was a year right. ago. Yeah. <laughs> so it, the thing with me with bowling, uh, what ruined it for me is one time we went bowling with like a bunch of my nieces and nephews, and they put the what do they call those things? The walls or the barriers? Oh, the the rails, cheaters, yeah. the rails. Yeah. 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 After that, it ruined me for bowling because I was like, this is a lot more fun. We should have this all the time. And they're like, but there's no skill in that. I'm like, exactly. I mean, there can be I mean, the trick shots off bowling. Yeah, it's like it's like know? pool, right? Yeah. You'd be doing ricochets and whatnot. And yeah. Off. Carom, it's a thing. I think that should be a I thing. think you can get creative it with it. It probably yeah. is a thing, man. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, would you classify that it's under like, extreme sports? Like or yeah. Freestyle bowling. Freestyle bowling. X Games bowling. Right? <laughs> you do it on a ramp. That's a... Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I think it's time for rapid fire. What do you Thing. I think that's a good question. All right. So <clears throat> let's see. What's something you could eat for a week straight? Bacon and eggs and steak. Uh, oh, that sounds good right about yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, sure beats beans for breakfast. Oh, well, well that's terrible. Well, I don't terrible know about idea. that. <laughs> well, actually, no, I, I could see that. I could see yeah, that. Pork and beans and eggs. But again, this is supposed to be rapid fire. So Sorry. let me get to the next question. <laughs> what is the place you want to travel to the most? Venice. Why? I've seen it in movies, mm -hmm. and there's something about it that just calls my name. They don't want tourists anymore. Though. I hear that. I hear <laughs> yeah. that, and I hear it smells like like bad. The aqueducts. Let's just yeah, say it smells yeah. bad. Yeah. Uh, I, well, I don't know, know about that. I've never been there. It, I agree with you. It does seem very beautiful, but um, once again, it's rapid fire, and I've gotten distracted. So. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's see. Would, do you believe in love at first sight? I do not. No. Nah. No. You should Pablo know? walk by again. I just. Well, I mean, I believe in lust at first sight. Oh, okay, that's yeah, <laughs> that's a different podcast. That's uh, Badger After Dark. Oh, no, Badger like After it. Dark. It's a like whole it. different thing. Um, what is your favorite summer activity? Ooh, um, like outdoor activity, I guess. You know what? I run. I run in the summer. Okay. Yeah. That's okay. I, I run never. So, <laughs> but you could tell that looking at me. <laughs> so. run. Sometimes you know the ice cream shops, the trucks come in just. Oh, that's Wait. actually what I meant. Oh, I yeah, meant yeah, running yeah. to the ice cream shop. Yeah. The ice cream shop? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, now we get to the uh, trivia portion of the afternoon. Are you ready, sir? I'm ready. Since we're talking about identity crises and whatnots and identifications, we're going to ask you questions about passports. Okay. Okay, passports. <laughs> so the United Kingdom, after they leave, is going to actually changed the color of their passport um while they were part of the european union they stuck with the theme like most other eu countries and had it sort of a maroon yeah. what color are they going back to going back to yes interesting i'm gonna say navy blue boom hey he's got it it's go. navy boom. blue most of the um, British Commonwealth uh, has navy blue passports including that canada. of canada so that's there here's the uh next question all right canadians can get passports in which year denominations? I don't know if that's the right word, but you can apply for a passport for which periods? Oh, I think it's every five or every 10 years. That is correct. 
He knows his passports, oh. people. He knows his identification documents. <laughs> no he crisis is. about it. That's right. There's no crisis here. He, right. he is the identity crisis. <laughs> and I do want to thank Mr. Paul Castro, also known as the Identity Crisis, for a number of things. I'd like to thank him, first of all, for the theme to the Humble Badger podcast. So if you like that theme, you do have a crush on him. He's mentioned that before. (laughs) We've gotten lots of uh, lovely fan mail uh, about that. Not actual mail, like, you know, emails and, you know, online comments and such. Mail Um, like (laughs) men. (laughs) (laughs) Not snail mail. But uh, we want to thank him for the theme. It's uh, it's a great theme. And then on top of that, I do want to thank him for co-hosting our first series and for being a guest here tonight. Thank you for coming. It is my honor, my privilege. And I'd like to also thank Mr. Hayo Duel Huapo, a.k.a. Chris. Hayo Duel Huapo. Hayo Duel Oh, sorry. I, I, I was trying to get all fancy. You I can know, follow know, him <laughs> at Hayo Del Huapo. Um, it's hard to say, but, uh, you know, just we'll, we'll, we'll post it online. We'll figure it out. And uh, I also want to thank uh, Tracks Ahead Studios. That's where we're coming from. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, compliments, feel free to reach us on social media. We're available on all major platforms for the podcast. Visit thehumblebadger.com for more details. I also want to shout out to our promotional partners at the Living Arts Center. So I'd like to be signing off here from the set. My name is Pablo Dawson. Wherever you are and whatever you do, remember to follow your passion. please visit thehumblebadger.com. The Humble Badger podcast is produced by the Pablo Dawson Company. Context matters. See you next time.